Hello, everybody, and happy 100. This is the best anybody's ever felt at 100, probably. Uh, <laughs> it is the main viewer. It's Star Trek Tuesday. Welcome to the show. Uh, it is our 100th episode, as well as our season two finale, as luck would have it, as well as our Star Trek Day preview. Boy, early September is nuts. So we have a lot to talk about. Obviously, uh, we have Star Trek Day to talk about. We've got our big, gigantic announcement that we have uh, related to Virtual Trek Con. Uh, we've got those animated treks, animated short treks, which are Very super short exciting. Treks. Very. <laughs> uh, which is really exciting, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we also have other really cool news, like a fan favorite showing up somewhere in these short treks. I know what you're going to say. They're all fan favorites, but you know, this one's kind of special. Kinda... Aaron Waltke has some things to say. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some Star Trek Picard news, all kinds of stuff. We've got some, uh, some Nog stuff to discuss as well. So uh, it's a good day. It is a good day. Everybody you know, get some lemonade out, sit back and relax, hang out with us. Look, everybody. Melissa Longo is here. You know her from Virtual Trek Con. Yeah, Watch the yeah. first and especially the seventh rule. Hi, how's it going? And I wish I could show you my shirt right now, but <laughs> it, I have um, a hairy chest at the moment. <laughs> You can see an and. <laughs> so if you have a hairy chest, everybody, and you'd like to cover it up with a Star Trek and chill shirt, like the one Melissa is wearing, like the one I'm wearing, prune juice mm -hmm. and chill. Mm -hmm. Hers, I think, says Riza and chill, maybe? It is, yeah. yes. <laughs> awesome. As well as Jenny R. Johnson's amazing shirt, Stem Bolt and Chill. You can get all of those at the link in the description box below, click on the Star Trek and Chill Shopify. It's a great way to support the show. Also to mm -hmm. walk around, you'll be the envy of all your friends. And if mm -hmm. you don't have friends, you will get some because of these shirts mm -hmm. in your hairy chest. Well, Look, everybody. Yeah. Oh. I was going to say, this one definitely gets a lot of attention. It does. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Because you get, uh, you get to see a lot of some sexy Picard thigh on that one. Everybody mm -hmm. listening in. Melissa actually has a cat hanging over it, uh, but she will reveal it later. <laughs> Go check yes. it out. You can get it in any size, any color. It's a lot of fun. Speaking of color, somebody that knows about color is Jenny R. Johnson. She's an incredible artist and she's here today. Oh. <laughs> I was so excited, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> uh, did somebody say excited? Well, you must be talking about Dr. Mohammed Noor, who is a vice provost at Duke University, as well as occasional Star Trek science advisor. And he is wearing a shirt that you can get at theintrovertedrepublic.com. It's an image of Guinan with the word listener below it. What's up, Mohammed? Hey, always happy to be on the main viewer. Yay. Hey. <laughs> and I love this shirt too. It's covering up my hairy chest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got Worf covering up my hairy chest mm -hmm. and uh, his prune juice and chill. Again, you can get it in any shirt, any size that is any color. Let's say hello to everybody in the live mm. chat, and then we will get to all of the news of the day. Hi, John Ford, Chris Marshall, Rashid, what's up? What's up, Glenn Iverson, uh, David Gregory. Hello, uh, Vault, what's up? Linda Andereg, J.R. Poole. Fran Iverson, Ben Genium, coolest name of the day. Uh, anyway, we see all of you. Rico E. Anderson, everybody. Rico Anderson's been feeling a little ill. He's getting better oh, lately. Oh, no. Much better lately. So we're hoping for good news. Hopefully he'll be joining us on Friday on the picket line because yeah. he's such a, he, he's a go-getter. Uh, <laughs> hope you feel better soon, Rico. All right. Oh, and my name's Ryan T. Husk. Let's get into the news, shall we? Everybody, first things first, the news gets better the more likes we get. So if you give this video a like, mm -hmm. um, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you're listening in, please give us a five-star rating and a nice review. Make sure you are following the podcast. That gives us so much strength. It's like latinum mm -hmm. to us. 
Mm. Make some news better. Maybe it'll make Prodigy have a new home. <laughs> if we get 100 <laughs> likes, Prodigy will announce immediately <laughs> their new home and new uh, premiere dates for uh, season two. That's right, so I wish that were true. <laughs> But we should still do that try. Be you know, <laughs> we'll see what happens. We could see if it happens. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if not yeah. hundred, then let's try a thousand. You know? <laughs> yeah, whatever right. it takes. Uh, all right. So the first thing in the news is if you go over to twitter.com, there is a uh, and you go to the handle at Star Trek, you may have heard of it. Ooh. They tweet out. From the mind of Casper Kelly comes a hashtag Star Trek, the animated series tribute like no other. Get ready for Star Trek, very short treks. First looks coming Star Trek day. Hashtag Star Trek animated celebration. So what's cool about this is this looks really cool. Actually, the whole this whole graphic kind of has mm -hmm. that 50 years ago feel. Looks like a comic mm -hmm. book, right? Yeah. They give us the titles. Um, Star Trek Very Short Treks. September 8th, that is on Star Trek Day. Mm -hmm. Skin a Cat is the first one. Then September 13th. The, the rest of them are going to be on Wednesdays. So mm -hmm. the first one is Friday, September 8th. Skin a Cat, the rest are on Wednesdays. September 13th is Holiday Party. Hmm. Makes me think of the card day or mm -hmm. when uh, Riker says, I love surprise parties on uh, parallels, <laughs> right? Yeah. Next generation parallels. <laughs> he puts the hat on. Oh my gosh, the hat. <laughs> so freaking cute. Uh, yeah, that graphic, or yeah, the graphic reminds me of um, TAS. Yeah. Oh, totally. Very much well, like that. Yeah, they nailed it. Mm -hmm. Then the third one, September 20th, worst contact. I feel like that's got to be a lower dex. Thing, that's what right? I was thinking. Because they said they're going to have, the, um, was it the voice of Tendi and Rutherford, was it? I can't remember. Right. Was, yeah. It was, it was definitely Tendi and somebody definitely else. Definitely Tendi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think it was the same, that that would be the first contact one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the fourth one, uh, September 27th, also Wednesday, holograms all the way down. I don't really know what that means. And then the last one, October 4th, walk, don't run. Oh, can I answer a question real quick? Linda Andrews asking in the live chat, uh, wait, is this only on Twitter? Actually, if you go to StarTrek.com, you can even watch like a, a short preview of the whole thing too. It's not just mm -hmm. on Twitter. So you can just go speaking to StarTrek.com. Speaking of which, everybody, the very next item up for bid oh. is startrek.com giving us more information Amazing. on this <laughs> Linda Andereg is freaking psychic uh, oh but before we do that let's read that awesome quote by Faith Howell in our live chat oh, yeah, where'd that go mm. she said let's see if I can find it under the gun she says you guys Thomas just screamed because I switched from Pokemon to this on the TV. Boy, that's a poor kid. I asked him, I asked him, quote, don't you want to say hi to Ryan? And my mostly nonverbal kid goes, hi, Ryan. Oh, <laughs> so, so cute. We'll, we'll take it. If we had more time, we should all pick what Pokemon we'd be, but let's not do that now. <laughs> Maybe that's a that's a Friday thing. I don't know any Pokemon. Oh, we can pick the one same for thing. you. We can pick one for you. you. We can have the live chat pick one for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or on Friday, though, not for today. It should be a poll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'd be a long poll. There's a lot of Pokemon to choose. Oh, from. okay. Never mm -hmm. mind. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, everybody. So the big announcement that we'll get into detail a little later, the big announcement is that we are finally going to audio podcast. Uh, so it's not just a visual uh, YouTube kind of thing, but it will also be audio podcast. So on Tuesday nights, uh, right after this, we will upload it. So that way, if you can't watch us right away, or if you prefer audio podcast to YouTube 
or if you're going on a trip or you know you're going on an airplane or something like that and you just want to take us with you there we will be in mm -hmm. audio podcast form wherever you find podcasts uh in the description box below you can click on the link and uh we have two uh two links from there you've got one is just everywhere that we are found it is a uh what is that link called pod link you click on that pod link and it's going to show every single podcast link so you can pick your favorite mm -hmm. but below that's even more important uh it is the apple podcast link if you click on that yeah. please make sure you give us a five star rating uh give us a review and uh you will win some prizes we'll get into that later Ooh. what <laughs> fun times that's awesome <laughs> all right so here is the news yeah muhammad would you like to read this one sure uh, uh i put first an we'll emphasis the title first yeah, I put an emphasis on very, but since it's smaller, maybe I should have said it more quietly, like yeah. Star Trek, very short treks. <laughs> <laughs> so the title is Celebrate 50 Years of Star Trek Animation with the launch of Star Trek, very short treks. The first of five very short treks to debut on Star Trek Day 2023, along with the first chapter of a new comic book. Ooh, yeah. so that's why that image had a cool comic book look, maybe. Mm -hmm. ah. So reading into the article. Star Trek continues its salute to the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the animated series, with the launch of Star Trek Very Short Treks, five all-new animated promotional shorts, and the new comic book, Star Trek, the Animated Celebration Presents the Schemer Barrier. I'm not sure if you pronounce that right. Both debuting on Friday, September 8th, as part of the annual Star Trek Day Global Celebration. Very exciting. Yeah. And you so can watch this on YouTube. It's like a 45 second preview. Uh, mostly it's stuff you've already seen before, but there are a couple images that will definitely raise some eyebrows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. one, from, one from Voyager in particular shows up early. <laughs> so pre previously, previously announced Star Trek Day programming and events can be found at StarTrek.com slash day. CBS Studios is launching Star Trek Very Short Treks a series of all-new animated promotional spots in the style of Star Trek The Animated Series. The very short treks will feature previously announced fan-favorite characters voiced by cast members from across the Star Trek universe, including icons Jonathan Frakes as Will Riker, Doug Jones as Saru, and Armin Shimmerman as Quark, and a wow. new lineup of exciting voices including Ethan Peck as Spock, Gates McFadden as Dr. Beverly Crusher, Celia Rose Gooding as Uhura, Connor Trenier as Trip Tucker, Bruce Horak as Hemmer, Noelle Wells as Tendi, and the legendary George Takai as Sulu. Oh yeah, my goodness. That is just, mm -hmm. that, is, <laughs> that is too much good stuff there. There was an interesting mm -hmm. thing. I don't know if you, you, so you watched the trailer. There was an interesting comment they said in passing of something like, this is definitely not canon or something like that. I'm like, mm. wait, like, really? Or are they just joking? Well, yeah, I couldn't tell no, what they meant by that. Yeah, because <laughs> Aaron Walkie made a tweet about the, uh, tell, saying the title of the one that he wrote. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned it not being canon, but um, the, yeah. You guys are so freaking psychic. I swear, we don't even have to plan this. You guys are leading this right in. Aaron J. Waltke quote tweets this from Star Trek. Uh, Melissa yeah. found this and sent this in. Uh, he says, I wrote holograms all the way down. So we know that to be the fourth episode. Awesome. And he continues, it's strange and fun, a la Adult Swim. A loving tribute. Absolutely not canon. Amazing. Hope you, hope you folks enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. He was in the live chat a few minutes ago too. I don't know if he still is. And and there were people in the oh, comments yeah, yeah. thread that um said um begged to differ. They said if it's on screen, then it's canon. <laughs> well, that's the thing that we've always been told that's canon. And by the way, I was having a, a heated debate with our friend Rico E. Anderson on whether uh the animated series is canon. Ah uh, and my position has always been that I, I believe they just said anything that's on the TV screen or the movie screen is canon. That mm -hmm. would include the animated series. That would include short treks. That would not include 
novels, you know, yeah. comic books, video games, yeah. things like that. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is not yeah, going to be on. Yeah, it's YouTube. It's not going to be on right. Paramount Plus as far as I'm concerned. As yeah, far as I know. Right. Well, yeah. and yeah. And Aaron Walkie even says in the live chat, to be clear, the shorts are not part of primary continuity, but the animated series are awesome. Got it. Thank you, Aaron. Very, That's very cool. clear. Yeah. I wasn't sure in that video if that was just a joke or if they actually meant it, but that, right. that, that makes sense now. <laughs> and yes, I think TMV is canon, Anne Marie. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Oh, the main viewer. Oh, I, <laughs> uh, I would I love to I believe wish. that too, but yeah. <laughs> you guys, we also have a uh, an animated series celebrity. Yeah. Uh, Geek Filter is our good friend Aaron Harvey. Uh, mm -hmm. He is like the resident expert on uh, the animated series. And by resident, I mean resident of the earth. Amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, so Geek Filter, aka Aaron Harvey, what do you think on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you for these uh, very animated, wait, very short treks? Um, yeah, for me, sense. for me, it's a 10 because I think it's going to bring more eyeballs to the animated series, which doesn't get enough love. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people have not seen the animated series. I hadn't seen it until a few years ago and I finally just popped it on and it's easily digestible. It's super fun. It's charming. The theme song is the snazziest thing you've ever heard. <laughs> I love it to death. And I, I really hope this will just give more, uh, get some more eyes in that direction. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jenny? What do you think of the artistry? <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I love that they've gone with that style. I think it's so fun. Um, and I also think it's really, it's just really cool. I don't know, reading that paragraph and just seeing all those names across the entire spectrum of Star Trek, it just feels so, it just feels so good to like see that happening and see, you know, see Paramount understanding that we want to see all of it. You know, it's just ooh, it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, um, I have to mention Aaron Waltke's other <laughs> <laughs> chat. <laughs> comment in the chat. If you need it, it's very short checks. If you need very short treks to be canon, think of it as an alternate universe created mm. by a drunk Q. Amazing. <laughs> Love that. I was thinking yeah. of it as like one of those lower decks holodeck holog programs Ooh. that they kind of wander into and are like, oh. yeah. Mm. What was, so, what was the name? Uh, oh, God. No, no, please. I was going to say, what was the name of the... the uh, the the ones that Mariner created it was like mm. Rise of Somebody I can't remember the name Chaotica no it was quite no 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 sorry it was, name. Sorry. It was yeah. similar yeah like Battle Scar Dramatica or yeah something. Ooh, I like that <laughs> uh, so Geek Filter Aaron Harvey replies he says how can I put this how can I nicely put this it's been an uphill battle to get people to take TAS seriously. And this seems overly goofy, but I am reserving judgment. Well, that's what we all thought about Lower Decks, right? And I love the shit out of it now. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the bottom line is, if this does bring eyes and eyeballs over to the animated series, then it's going to be a plus. I will say, however, I was rooting for it to be canon. So maybe it'll be a head canon thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I also wonder by the very short tricks. I mean, the short tricks, I mean, I think the shortest of the short tricks was only like six or seven minutes, right? So they're very short tricks. Like, how short yeah. are these? <laughs> Three yeah. to five minutes, I believe. How much? Three to Four five minutes. Three I to believe. five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Could, uh, very short. But uh, I have to also mention another comment that Aaron Waltke makes your point for you, uh, Ryan. Is he says that a uh, giant Spock appeared on TAS and also appeared on Lower Decks. Yep. Lower Decks appeared on Strange New Worlds mm -hmm. by the transitive property. That means TAS is canon. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Mic drop. And uh, just about everybody <laughs> in the in the live chat remembers 
It's Vindica. Vindicta. That was right. Vindicta. Right. Vindicta. Oh. We're the only four people that couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, team. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. very cool. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Vindicta, uh, Giant Spock, we got all that. Great. So let us continue. Hello, Badger, we see you in the live chat. Let's continue on because there's more information to be given here, I believe. Yes. All right, Muhammad, if you would, uh, first off, we'll just show everybody this awesome graphic that they made for this Star Trek, the animated celebration. Hey, prodigies represented. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Better be. It is. Yeah. Eric's, it yeah, is. and MRS and all these guys. Yeah. And then oh, and these the Orions, the funny oh, Orions. Man. Remember that mm -hmm. are like, but they, maybe they call them Orions, but it was spelled like Orions. And the ladies, the blonde ladies that were on that planet that um drained oh, the energy right. from the men. Yeah. And then oh, Ura yeah. had to save save them from that planet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we have some of these short treks too. Here are yeah. these guys. Oh, and the Saylot. Okay, oh, anyway. Saylot. Boy, they really put a lot into this. It's great. Yeah. There's zero. Very cool. All right. There you go, Muhammad. Sure. Star Trek, very short treks from creative consultant Casper Kelly, best known for the viral smash hit Too Many Cooks and his work on Star Trek short treks and Adult Swim. The first animated spot will launch on Star Trek Day, September 8th, exclusively on StarTrek.com and the official Star Trek YouTube channel, with four additional animated spots rolling out weekly on Wednesdays through October 4th at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Titles and release schedule include, and here's the thing from Twitter. That you saw just those, showed. yep. And this yeah. is Aaron Walkie, September 27th. Save the date, everybody. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that reminds me, I need to respond to a save the date. Sure. Um, <laughs> September 8th, Skin a Cat. September 13th, Holiday Party. September 20th, Worst Contact. September 27th, Holograms All the Way Down by Aaron Walkie. <laughs> October 4th, <laughs> Walk, Don't Run. Casper Kelly will also release a new comic book with IDW Publishing. Star Trek, the animated celebration presents the Schemer Barrier. Apologies if I'm mispronouncing the Schemer part. The first chapter of the comic will debut digitally on September 8th on StarTrek.com with physical copies available at New York Comic Con in October. Additional chapters of the comic will drop weekly on Wednesdays on StarTrek.com at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Sounds familiar. That's the big mm. question here. Now, when are they going to be released on YouTube, though? That's also my question. We know mm. it's going to be StarTrek.com. Well, it'll probably just link to YouTube. They'll probably the same time, I yeah. guess um because some of us are impatient <laughs> not me but some of us my class uh, is at one o'clock on wednesday so and then there's the right after class oh nice that's <laughs> awesome and then there's the canadians and the and the europeans who are like is it gonna be location locked or is oh. it gonna be available to us are we gonna be able to right oh. well youtube is pretty open right do you guys run into any yeah. issues with youtube oh always yes yeah no oh no Star Trek's youtube is always like is always oh, no. ge geolocked that's the word geolocked yeah. yeah so like like the ready room i can only watch it on facebook sometimes on star trek.com sometimes so hopefully hopefully it'll huh. work on yeah on the website but i think it said that it was available on star trek.com as well yeah, it should be. It's just sometimes they're sometimes yeah. when they stream things on oh on the yeah. website, it does the link it, to the it, YouTube maybe exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like sometimes they forget to like unlock. Yeah. Do you have a VPN? No. <laughs> I don't. I need to I need to do that. I need to do that. No, we don't encourage that kind of talk around here. The only three letter acronym that starts with a V we like is VTC. Yes. Oh, there you go. That's a, that is a good one. Yes. That's true. I do have a VTC. Thank you for asking, Mohammed. <laughs> uh, speaking of streaming, everybody, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel is in the live <laughs> chat. And uh, she had a bit too much of a stream because her apartment yeah. flooded a bit, everybody. No. So sorry to say. 
But uh, she also said the funniest line of the last 24 hours earlier today. She said, I feel like I'm a cetacean ops officer. Yeah, that was a great <laughs> line. She told me that too. Uh, <laughs> she probably felt good about it. She's like, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Send it to everybody. She's like, that's a good line. I need that credit for that line. one. Well done. So shout out to Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel. Um, everybody send your uh, rags, towels, <laughs> rugs you don't need to P.O. Box. No, I don't know. Hmm. Sham wows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh. yeah she definitely needs him very All right. absorbent <laughs> so mm. there was a little trick i did earlier which was when muhammad was reading the names of everybody that's going to be in these very short treks i didn't personally jump on to any of those names because there was one especially that i think is very yeah. noteworthy personally yes. yeah uh others yes. may have theirs yep. you know bruce horak is definitely one mm-hmm. george decay is definitely one ethan peck as mm-hmm. spock now mm-hmm. is he going to be spock in strange new worlds in mm-hmm. the original series in the animated series in all of them um mm-hmm. but the one that jumped out at me and same mm-hmm. thing with Celia Rose, yeah, Gooding, she could mm-hmm. play Strange New Worlds and the original series and the animated series. But the mm-hmm. one that jumped out at me was yes, yes. Premier yes. as yes. Trip a long Tucker, time, <laughs> oh, which is why so I awesome. wish this was canon. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? Yeah. It could prove Trip's still alive, at right? The end of Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I'm so excited for that one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, see what they do. Oh. I want to see him like on a farm somewhere with like a, a weed yeah. in his teeth playing a banjo, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh. Down driving a boat in the Everglades. Mm. <laughs> so on that note, our good friend John Orchiola of Screen Rant, aka Back of the Head, wrote a really cool article on ScreenRant.com. Nice. Yeah. And it is entitled Star Trek Actor Res. Yeah, that's right. Star Trek actor <laughs> resurrects fan favorite Enterprise character after 18 years. Yay. Connor Trenier will play Trip Tucker for the first time since Star Trek Enterprise's finale by lending his voice as Trip in very short treks. Love it. Now, being that this isn't canon, who it, it could take place in you know after he dies for all we know. Yeah. Uh, but Muhammad, you want to take this one too? Mm-hmm. he's not yeah. dead <laughs> yeah star trek's new animated or sorry new series of animated shorts very short treks will be connor Trenier's non-canon comeback as commander trip tucker after star trek enterprise was canceled 18 years ago trip a fan favorite character was killed off in the series finale of star trek enterprise in 2005 a creative des- decision that angered fans and remains a sore spot nearly two decades later Trenier joins cast members from Star Trek Legacy shows and the current series on Paramount+, Plus, including Ethan Peck, Jonathan Frakes, Celia Rose Gooding, Armin Shimmerman, and George Takai to lend their voices to very short treks. Mm. I didn't even catch that earlier that he actually mentions the non-canon thing, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Apparently, this has been known to everybody except us because up until like two days ago or three days ago, I thought, is it? Are these canon? Like, is this? Mm-hmm. I was thinking this was going to be Short Trek season three. Mm-hmm. That's what I was yeah. hoping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do want to point out here. Uh, oh. oh, Aaron Lucky says, "Oh, is in my episode." That that's <gasps> wait a minute. That down. Okay. And it's, Yay! Oh. Ah, even better. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. We have a date for one. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but but it's non-canon at the moment, but that doesn't mean <laughs> they can't take stuff from short, very short treks and make them canon, just like mm-hmm. they have with the books. True. Yeah. That's a good point. Like even the name Una, didn't that come from like a book or something too? Because it wasn't in the cage. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're True. right. And they have done that plenty of times where something mm-hmm. that's not necessarily canon 
they've just taken, you know, like with uh, Star Trek Online, they do that. Yep. They, yep. Yeah. That's true, true. Uh, exactly. So my question is, who are you guys most excited to hear, I guess? Whose voice? <laughs> I mean... Aside from the cat. Yeah. No. <laughs> Um, no, my, I, when I read Connor Trenier returning as Trip Tucker, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, 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 <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Like so, Home Alone. Yes, that, Very much that. <laughs> that, um, he is the, the voice that I'm looking forward to the most because I'm so excited to see how that story pans out. So excited. Yeah. Yeah. Because Trip isn't dead. No, not <laughs> agreed. No, <laughs> and I love. So we've got him this very in the much. live. Ch- we've got this in the live chat. The question is, who are you most excited for? Jonathan Frakes, Doug Jones, Armin Shimmerman, Ethan Peck, Gates McFadden, Sally Rose Gooding, Connor Trenier, Bruce Horak, Noel Wells, George Takei. Maybe we'll do a poll for like the yeah. the top four answers. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's it's tough to decide because some of them we still have other opportunities to hear. So like Sally, yeah. yeah, I mean I love the fact she's there. Ethan Peck, you know, fantastic guy, yeah. fantastic character, mm-hmm. but there are other opportunities to to see him. Yeah. Whereas somebody like Connor Trenier, you know, that ship sailed, mm-hmm. that ship's gone. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. Well, and similarly uh with Bruce Horak as Hemmer. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of is too it is similar in that sense as well. That's very yeah. interesting actually. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, all are great, but it, yeah. It, yeah, it has been just a long time on that one, and we don't. Then there's yeah. no anticipation of any more. Doug Jones is an interesting one because we have one more season of Discovery, but then mm-hmm. that's it, and there's right. no yeah. no sense we'll have any more Doug Jones after that. Totally so. right, and, mm-hmm. and even Armin Shimmerman as Quark, we haven't had a whole lot of Quark. We've had him once, yeah. Um, since the new trek came out so it would be it's great to see that he's there as well Mm -hmm. it's funny because i mean i mean although i will say i'm i i would watch jonathan Frakes like paint a room you know like i like jonathan (laughs) Frakes could do anything and i'll be excited to see him do it so that's you know but we have seen a lot of him I've seen a lot of him and he's great at painting toenails too. <gasps> nice. <laughs> I've not actually seen a lot of them. That's a whole other. <laughs> he's great. That's he's got very gentle set. hands and he. he wow. He, he helps them dry. Briggs was, wow. was literally in the last episode with Connor too. <laughs> yes. true. I mean, this is very and true. And then multiple oh sins. Gosh. Mm, right. <laughs> right. Um, Aaron Wolke is putting the name of his a very short trek in there. So I'm thinking that might be a hint. Holograms all the way down. Hmm. Sorry, I'm handling well, the poll. He also <laughs> said, I think 90% of them are in my episode specifically. Oh. Ooh. Oh, yes, oh, he did. Of course. He yes, did we should have known that. that. <laughs> Yeah, that does make sense. He's a huge fan, so I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> because you know okay. what it was. Paramount was like, oh, okay, uh, so you got this three and a half minute, very short trek animated, uh, just so we know ahead of time which actors uh, do you want involved. And Aaron said, yes, all of yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> please, yes. yes, please, thank you, thank you. And they're like, is there? Is there more to this email? No, it just says yes, please. Okay. Mm. See what we can do, Aaron. He's like, have you seen Kobayashi Maru? It was the sixth episode of Prodigy. You might look into it. Mm. He describes yes. them as, as SNL-like sketches about Star Trek. Yeah. Oh, that's, awesome. that's okay. fun. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And he did say that his had the most cameos ever. That's on awesome. Together. Wow, so, that's saying a lot. After uh, what was the what was the Prodigy episode that had so many cameos? That's saying Kobe a lot. Yashi Maru. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's even more than that. Oh, so, okay. that might be every one of them then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing this uh, second round of the poll. All right. Because, Yay. Uh, the first one. <laughs> I mean, so much love fun. for Doug Jones in the first one. 
<laughs> well, we would, but we love Doug Jones. <laughs> there, was, there needed to be more love. He wants more oh. hugs now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that was the reason. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the first one, uh, actually, of, of our polls, because there are 11 names there mentioned. Uh, so the first three, actually, Armin Shimmerman won the first one as uh, the one that people are most excited for. That's a fun one. That's very interesting and cool. Mm -hmm. We do love us some Armin yeah, Shimmerman. This one's a slaughter. <laughs> wow. And wow. Uh, the second it's... one of... <laughs> Who are you most excited for is between Ethan Peck, Gates McFadden, Sally Rose Gooding, and Connor Trenier. Pick your favorite. If you are just listening in, everybody, uh, if you want to be a part of these polls, just feel free to watch us on YouTube. When we go live, we just kind of add this thing so that it's a lot more fan interactive. Well, for this one, it has been a long road. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Apparently years. people think looking at the results as they're coming in, like, holy moly, that's not even close. <laughs> I think we got to just uh, end the suffering right now, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's Put this painful. one to bed. So uh, <laughs> this one, as Muhammad said, is a slaughter with <laughs> Connor Trenier getting 90% of the votes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's lovely. So again, it's no knock on the others. I mean, it's just the other, yeah. like Ethan and, uh, and mm. Celia, like we have other opportunities to see them. We anticipate more of these other opportunities mm -hmm. to see them. So it's not a knock on them at all. Yeah. Well, and then Aaron Waltke also comments that, how could I not? I kept putting them in and no one said no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's like a casserole of Star Trek <laughs> characters. Yeah. Or like one of those clown cars. Where yeah. <laughs> how many can fit? <laughs> yeah, totally. And then yeah. who knows, he might just have more characters without voices, just like in the background or moving this around or true. breaking stuff or exploding oh or something. Yeah. So this, last, <laughs> this last one is between Bruce Horak, Noel Wells, and George Takei. Yeah. And mm. while we do that, uh, what is the next item up for bid? Yeah, uh, we covered that. Everybody go check out screenrant.com. Great um, content. Thanks, John Orkula. Yeah. Yes, mm. good stuff. Yeah. Absolutely not canon by Aaron J. Waltke. That's what it should have been called. <laughs> <laughs> that would have um, been a great day. <laughs> But it could be. <laughs> one more piece of information on this one. And there are a lot of websites that cover this. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is deadline.com. It's entitled Star Trek, very short treks to be unveiled by CBS studios on Star Trek day. I don't think we need to read that. I think we've got all the information from star trek.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just wanted to point out that even deadlines covering this. Right. So, you know, they don't usually cover small minor things so even if deadline's covering it they consider this to be a legitimate Cannon. thing no, yeah, that's kidding. right i was trying not to it's say that <laughs> it's on deadline i like that so, Maria in the live chat refers to them as short short tracks it's a very short yeah. track. <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so mm -hmm. this third round uh poll actually bruce horak won that one so it looks like it's very clearly, uh, but George got a, a honorable second. Yeah. So it'll be between these final four. It'll be between Armin, Bruce. Ooh, it's going to be a big fight. George and Connor. <laughs> and then the question is, which are you most excited <laughs> for not who your favorite or who's yeah. the best as muhammad yeah. clears up just which one are you most excited for for whatever yeah. reason yep mm -hmm. all right everybody calm down about connor who's superior <laughs> all right, all right. Cool. uh so <laughs> while people are voting on that here is the other big news of the day of many there are actually a lot um and that is for virtual Trek Con, we actually have, let me pull this up. 
we've got our big announcement, which is that Virtual TrekCon now has a podcast. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a podcast on YouTube, but now we are going on uh, everywhere you get your podcast. So what we did was we added a bunch of previous uh, recordings, like content mm -hmm. from Virtual TrekCon 1, Virtual TrekCon 2, Virtual TrekCon 3, not all of the things but a lot of like the interviews with say like Doug Jones or with Walter Koenig or a, a deep space nine panel or yeah. a couple of the great ones that Melissa Longo has done or some of the science ones Dr. Knorr has done. Uh, so we've done those, we added those, but you know, some we couldn't like, some were like awesome makeup tutorials by mm -hmm. Emmy award-winning uh, uh, makeup effects guy, Tom yeah. Supernant. Yeah. It, it's a visual thing, you know, yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So if it's not there, it's just because it's not great for, the audio format. So from now on, every Tuesday night, once the main viewer is over, we will upload this episode to the audio podcast. So you can check it out on Tuesday nights or Wednesday mornings, whatever you like. And on Fridays, we will be releasing Friday content as well. That'll be initially virtual TrekCon stuff from just a few months ago, all those cool panels and inter interviews. And then after that, of course, Star Trek and chill. Mm -hmm. Will this episode uh, be included too? Yep. Cool. Amazing. Starting right now. It's like, it's like right now. Yeah. I'm not uh, sure so if it's for, next season or this season. That's what I was asking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. It would have been smarter to just do st starting with a season three opener, but whatever. Okay. Ah, happy on this one. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> nobody ever. Yeah. Th that's what it is. 100. Yeah. 100. Uh, so, for example, here, you know, we have David Benjamin Tomlinson from Star Trek mm -hmm. and Chill. We do have a few Star Trek and Chills as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, season two, Strange New World, season two analysis. Um, we got the Lappy Awards, which is a pretty big one. Oh, so uh, the good. Renaissance Awards, Mothers of Deep Space Nine. This was a Melissa Longo special from Virtual Trek Con 3. Mm -hmm. Connor mm -hmm. Turnier and Dominic Keating. Speaking anyway. Um, Topical. <laughs> Garrett Wong, Megan Elise. Mm -hmm. So, oh, oh, Muhammad, you remember this one? Mars. Oh, yeah, very well. Yeah, with Dr. Abigail Freeman and Dr. Tanya Har that was a Harrison, uh, Doug Drexler. Anyway, the point yeah. is, when you go there, everybody, you can find that link in the description box below. When you go there, please give us a five star rating right here. Give us a nice review. Click see all. Click it. Type in a, a review for us. Once we get to one hundred reviews slash ratings. We will pick three winners and give you free stuff. And uh, I guess it's not free because you paid with like time to type, but it's like 30 seconds. So once you've done the review and rating, email us at virtualtrekcon at gmail.com. Once again, that's virtualtrekcon at gmail.com. And just say, hey, I rated and reviewed, gave it five stars, hopefully. And you will be automatically entered to win. If we get to 100 by the end of this week, we'll pick three winners and mm -hmm. have some fun. Uh, Bill Erickson won the first one on Friday night in our preview thing. Melissa awesome. Longo picked his name out of a hat. <laughs> one thing that I learned, so I don't usually review podcasts on, on uh, Apple, but I, I went to, first of all, you can't do it from just a browser. I think you have to do it from your, your, from your Apple device, like an iPhone. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing is when you go in there, you scroll down to the bottom, you write your review, but then it has a number of stars there, but you actually can't click the number of stars. You have to like submit the review and then you come out and then you can click the number of stars. It was oh. very counterintuitive in so many mm -hmm. steps, but <laughs> eventually got oh. it all there. Okay. That's Good really weird for Apple. Apple, the right? they kind of get us hmm. with simplicity. You would think that they'd yeah. be better at this. It's really weird because it had the five blank stars. I kept on and it said, click to decide how many stars. They just wouldn't let me do it. And I hit submit and then I could go back and then I could add the number of stars. Like, what? Well, why did you? <laughs> Weird. Yeah, Weird. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. Maybe my mm -hmm. finger was weird. I don't think so. Because it, it was fine after I came out of it. So I even Your tried. Your finger's not times. weird. I think it <laughs> saves it and then it just shows up later. But I think you can just click the five stars. But I'm yeah. no. So it wouldn't show it. Like I would click it. It just wouldn't mm -hmm. even highlight the stars. It was like I was submitting with no star rating. Very stressful. That's why I actually wrote in there five stars. It won't let me say that. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, speaking of which please go join the Virtual Trek Con Facebook group. And then you can vote on important things like what will be the main graphic for this podcast? 
because when people go onto Apple, you know, podcasts or wherever you get yours, you know, Spotify, or they got a 20 of them. When, when you go to that, there's that little picture. What's that image going to be? Well, um, if you go over here, I'll show you. You can actually vote on your favorite. They're all created by our good friend, the Matt Boardman, who worked on the Orville and Discovery. So it says, vote for your favorite VTC podcast main graphic. Vote by giving a like to your favorite. Uh, note these will be small thumbnails and people scroll through podcasts. Thanks. So check this out. It's so nice. pretty. Very mm -hmm. gorgeous. These I were originally it. based off the concept that our good friend Scott Baker created Ooh. for the original virtual Trekcon right. one, if this design looks familiar to all of you. So here is one possibility. Here's another one where the Star Trek logo is the sun, basically, oh. rather than in front of the setting sun, it is the setting sun. And the text is down here. The third one has the virtual Trekcon up here with the setting sun being the Star Trek insignia again. Uh, this one is similar, but with smaller black text. And this one is a fun, creative thing with mm -hmm. the virtual trek on and the VTC right. in there. Love it. Love it. Um, mm -hmm. So those are your five options. Give, give a like to the one that's your favorite. And also Matt Boardman added a bonus because he's a very silly. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he added... For everybody just <laughs> listening, he added a Ryan T husk with the T being this giant beast inside of Love the insignia. It. That's amazing. Love it's it. Yeah. Part Love of it. my ego. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say very apt, but then you said ego. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Wait, He's like, Matt, right. Matt's like, wait a minute. I know what you want, Ryan. You don't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Ryan giant T husk. <laughs> Anyway, so go vote on that in uh, the Facebook group. That is also linked in the description box below. All the links are down there. Anyway, moving on, please get us to 100 reviews and ratings on Apple Podcasts. We would really appreciate that. It's vital. It's so freaking important. We'll, we'll give you like 30 free things if you just get us there, please. Mostly by Jenny R. Johnson Art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. You should buy Jenny's art. It's awesome. As well as Melissa's shirts. <laughs> right. As well as the and, VTC shirts. And Ryan's. They're so good. Oh, yes. So this next news oh. item, uh, Muhammad, if you will, this is very sure. important as yeah. well. It's from trekmovie.com. Sure. Exclusive clip. Marina Sirtis talks TNG cast chemistry from Star Trek Picard season three DVD slash Blu-ray. I'm assuming she's not referring to the science discipline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Star Trek Picard Season 3 arrives today on DVD, Blu-ray, and limited edition Steelbook. The new set includes over two and a half hours oops, of special features. Uh oh, you clicked me away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was looking at those pictures again. I <laughs> Let me pull those back up. Here sure. We go. I was like, oh, I want to look at those gorgeous freaking pictures. Because they're really good. Matt Boardman is. You got second computer. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The new set includes over two and a half hours of special features, and we have an exclusive clip from Star Trek Picard, the final season, recapturing lighting in a bottle for Picard season three. The big thing for season three of Picard was bringing on board the cast of Star Trek The Next Generation for what showrunner Terry Metalis said was, quote, a proper send off of the TNG crew. In the following clip from the home media release, Marina Sirtis, who plays Deanna Troy, talks about the unique chemistry of the cast. And then there's a YouTube Very clip. Very cool. There. Yeah, we can't see that clip. Um, however, <clears throat> here is the rest of that article. Okay. Pull that back up. There you go. Okay. The, C the season three Blu-ray and DVD are out now. Star Trek Picard, the final season, was released today, September the 5th on DVD, Blu-ray, and limited edition Blu-ray Steelbook. Here is a full list of special features, noting which are exclusive to the home media release. The Gang's All Here featurette, which is exclusive. The Making of the Last Generation featurette, which is exclusive. Audio commentary on select episodes, which is exclusive. Deleted scenes, which is exclusive. 
Gag reel, always fun, exclusive. Rebuilding the Enterprise D featurette. Villainous Vatic featurette. Picard, the final season Q&A panel with cast and crew. And audio commentary on select episodes from the show creators and cast. So that last one is not exclusive since there was an mm. earlier one that was. <laughs> I'll tell you why stuff like this is super important is because we've kind of learned this lesson recently that uh, Aaron Waltke, if he's in the live chat, will attest that mm -hmm. we've all uh, over the last few years, we've all been conditioned to think, oh, cool, I can get rid of all my stuff because I can watch it forever on Paramount Plus. I can watch it anytime on youtube or on whatever i want but you know what it's certainly more convenient but mm -hmm. if the powers that be take it down suddenly you can't watch it anymore mm -hmm. it's also important in my opinion because it shows you know paramount and others how important a show is to you if you're paying with views and clicks that's great but if you're also paying with purchases that is also yeah. great yeah. and i bet the more stuff, more money we throw at people, hopefully that means the more Star Trek keeps coming. I don't know. That's just yeah. a theory, but I'm hoping, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would make sense from a business yeah. perspective. I mean, they're they're out to make money, you know, and, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, it has to be sustainable. Well, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> someone has to pay for Jonathan Frakes's contract, right? I <laughs> can do anything. He's worth it. <laughs> Well, and the reality is, is we live in a society driven by money. And yeah. if, if we don't have any, then we can't go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And we want, and we want all the, all the cast crew and everybody to be fairly compensated as part mm -hmm. of that process. And that, that takes money. Absolutely. Yep, that's the truth. Yes, yeah, definitely. And the writers too. Good writers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the writers, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do besides create all of it? Uh, so was anyway, a, this. There was a great sorry. comment at Dragon Con this past weekend. Wilson Cruz was on a panel and he had a, he had a hard time saying something. He's like, this is why other people write my content. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a great reminder, though, to say, yeah. and by the way, everybody. Yeah. yeah. All right. So back to this article. It's got some nice images yeah. of Blu-ray and mm -hmm. Steelbook for $39.95. Blu-ray is $34.96. Wow. Look at that's an interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh and yeah. Steelbook Blu-ray for $39.95 and DVD for $29.96. What is going on? These guys are edgy. <laughs> I wish they'd sell them as like a USB stick or something like that. Like I don't have something that plays these very easily. So I wish it sells like a USB stick you could just buy and plug in your computer and watch it. <laughs> I want to buy the brilliant. I want to buy the VHS. I've got a I've got a VCR hooked up out there. Oh wow! Oh yeah, I keep I keep everything. It should be. I have one too. <laughs> yeah, it should be in do. a thumb. Yes. It, these should be in a thumb drive, like you're saying, totally. Mohammed, in the shape of the ship of the show. Oh, my oh God. so it would be like oh, that would be epic. The would Enterprise be epic. D, yeah. the hard season three thumb drive, yeah. or oh, you know, yeah. the Defiant like, Deep Space mm -hmm. Nine. You know, or like you heard it here first. Uh, the, oh, that's yeah. brilliant. Oh, yeah, the, the Chateau Picard. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, flash drive. So we one of those is like the Proto Star or, mm -hmm. you know, or any of the other shows. Yeah, Brilliant. exactly yeah. that. <laughs> so everybody just listening in, uh, Jenny just happened to have right on her person something oh. that looks like a Chateau Picard wine bottle cork, but when you mm -hmm. open it up, it is a thumb drive. What's in it? Very cool. What's on my thumb drive? It's just, or is it just blank? blank? At, the, at, at this point, it actually is blank, but it's going to be okay. full of paintings soon. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I think that might ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I really don't. The article says the USB ship is docking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is landing. Oh no! <laughs> so, uh, Muhammad, can you read this last bit? Because there is something I have not read this, but these look freaking gorgeous. Sure, look at this. Mm. So, Picard Legacy Collection in October, coming October seventeenth, will be Star Trek: The Picard Legacy Collection, described as quote the definitive release 
for next generation fans. The limited edition set includes 54 individually numbered Blu-ray discs and unique packaging that houses every TV series and film featuring Jean-Luc Picard. That includes seven seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation, three seasons of Picard, and the four TNG feature films, along with over 35 hours of special features. This limited set also includes an exclusive edition of The Wisdom of Picard, featuring brand new artwork and quotes, along with a one-of-a-kind deck of playing cards, a magnet sheet featuring all of Captain Picard's badges, and four custom Chateau Picard drink coasters. You can pre-order the Legacy Collection at Amazon for $211.10. So there's an error in there. I don't know if you guys caught it. I, I did. So everything featuring Captain Picard, that should include the pilot of Deep Space Nine. Oh, Ooh, yes. Oh, good <laughs> Good catch. Wow, yeah. 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 Wow. You know, I got to be honest. Though, I mean, this is all gorgeous. There's these comm badges too. Unbelievable. Yeah. But I'm such a sucker for coasters. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, they're cute. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> it's this beautiful red color. These are mm -hmm. red with like gold text. And this mm -hmm. is just absolutely gorgeous. And I would yeah. love those coasters. I would love every, all of this. I love the profile oh, very on the cool. smaller yeah. thing. Yeah, it's really great. I wonder where they got that idea from. Yeah. I think she I don't think she I think she meant like Melissa. Oh. <laughs> She's right. It also looks like uh Alfred Hitchcock, Hitchcock. right? Exactly. <laughs> um yeah, you're right. It does not say deep space nine mm -hmm. oh okay so here is something for people like jenny r right muhammad check the suit mm -hmm. oh there ah. we go. coming soon to other regions but star trek picard season three as a standalone re release and the complete series box set will be available on mm -hmm. and it has I mean, i'm not gonna read all of them but like united kingdom france germany spain australia japan italy uh, you know, it has it has dates for all those things. They're they're mostly in November, which is different dates in November. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's already on Amazon.ca. Oh, okay. Yes. Perfect. Wow. Wow. So, uh, everybody in the live chat, let us know who is going to go buy that right freaking now. And if you do, <laughs> and you don't want the coasters <laughs> or any Christmas of that present stuff, for Ryan. <laughs> Usha Rast uh, says not in Brazil, which is unfortunate. It will be. Uh, Rico Anderson is in the live chat talking jive to our buddy Wardog Heim. Uh, Dave Gregory says, Sacre bleu. <laughs> uh, okay, so the winner of the poll, Jenny R. Johnson, I'm sure you, you can guess, right? I can guess. The late, it's, the great. Well, not late. Yeah, I was about to say. Great, but very great. <laughs> well, Trip Tucker is the late great. But so that's okay. okay. But he's also not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Connor Trenier dominated, of course. Um, so everybody mm -hmm. uh, salute Connor Trenier. Tweet at him and say, we settled it. You are the dude we are most looking forward to to hearing from so don't screw it up like what if he just has like one line where he's like ah <laughs> also thank Aaron Walkie right. for bringing him back to to a yeah. screen for us yes. so thanks, thank Aaron, you Aaron Walkie well and it's also more evidence that fans aren't done with enterprise <laughs> we Absolutely. are not done with well enterprise said. well mm -hmm. said well said Longo. <laughs> in fact we need to re-up our enterprise love and wow. things like the animated series things like enterprise things mm -hmm. like prodigy those are the mm -hmm. shows that i think we really got to uh you know redouble our efforts to let them know we support them yeah in strange new worlds we could have a to paul appearance mm -hmm. yes we could. absolutely we could and uh, and or even a carter for pure and tech mm -hmm. <laughs> even flocks we don't know how long yeah. no be lens live that's true. To Paul, to Paul should have had two siblings named Mary and Peter. 
right? Peter to Paul yes. and Mary. That would have been. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a missed opportunity. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> May Borello says, sorry, Ryan, I need some coasters. Four? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> mm. Okay. So up next, this is also very important to everybody because, as you know, in just a couple days or in a day and a half, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4 will be premiering with two episodes at, at the same time, right? They're just dropping at the same time. I Literally yeah. at the same time. They're, like, you have to watch them at the same time together. Yeah. Like, well, I get a head start be on the second one, then go back to the first one. Exactly. <laughs> Mariner could do that. I don't think I could handle it. Yeah. She'd be like, oh yeah, this is the only way to watch TV. I watch three episodes at a time. She'd be like this. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is from uh, StarTrek.com. Can I just throw out there before you start, Aaron Waltke is <laughs> type singing <laughs> the theme song to Enterprise yeah. <laughs> in the live chat. <laughs> I like back of the heads comment, maybe Pelly is one of Flox's ex-wives. <laughs> that, ooh, right remember we yeah. can for all we know we can see pelia in lower decks good? yes <laughs> yeah yes or in prodigy mm -hmm. as uh you know at starfleet academy or in the starfleet academy show she could be a professor yeah, there that's crazy True. so that's all great stuff um okay yeah so check this out everybody it's from Star Trek.com, uh, where we last left off with Star Trek Lower Decks. Make second contact with the animated series before season four debuts, debuts this mm -hmm. week. Uh, you want to hit this one, Mohammed? Sure. The misadventures of the USS Cerritos return this week with the fourth season premiere of Star Trek Lower Decks. But before we go forward, Let's take another survey mission and make second contact to ensure we're all up to speed on where we last left off with the Cerritos. Our old Funny buddies. Pictures there, yeah. Yay. The ship. With an automated Texas-class ships having gone rogue, they were running on the code of, of the glitchy yet murderous badgie. It seemed like the fate of the Cerritos <laughs> would follow that of the Badmiral Les Buenamigo, who was not a buen and amigo when his own <laughs> creations turned on him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thankfully, the defected Mariner returns with the entire California-class cavalry to aid her former crew from near annihilation. The next Beckett Mariner. Following Ensign Beckett Mariner's unsanctioned rescue mission of the Cerritos captain and her mother in the season three opener grounded, Captain Carol Freeman and her father, Admiral Alonzo Freeman, gave her one last chance to prove Starfleet was where she wants to be. This, despite shaping up and, and mending her relationships, when the Federation News Network, or FNN, puts out an expose on the Cerritos questioning its crew and purpose, the entire ship automatically assumes it was Mariner's doing. Reassigned to Starbase 80, Mariner resigns and enjoys civilian life as an enterprising partner of Petra Aberdeen and the Independent Archaeologists Guild. After coming to the Cerritos' aid with the California-class fleet, Mariner has a change of heart and wants to return to Starfleet and the Cerritos, which they all welcome her back. Reinstated, she requests for Commander Jack Ransom to be her mentor. Isn't Petra like an, an old archaeological city in the middle east somewhere yes, like maybe so. syria yeah. or something yeah i think that's right mm -hmm. i wonder if she was named after that that's a brilliant name if so yeah yeah that's perfect yeah. for for what she does yeah yeah no coincidences mm -mm. uh mm. please continue dr nor sure rad boimler ensign brad boimler aka bold boimler takes it to the <laughs> max this past season Worried that he'll be an ensign for life, he takes Tendi's advice to be more assertive to the extreme. He signs up for Spring Ball, joins Shax's Bajoran Dirge Choir, and even willingly lets himself be hunted as prey for Karanch. While showing off his hollow movie sequel, Crisis Point 2, Paradoxus, Boimler learns of the demise of his transporter duplicate, William Boimler, who took over his position on the USS Titan under Captain Will Riker, which sends him in a depressive spiral. While trying to understand the meaning of life, as well as meaning in the randomness of death, 
a hallucination of Captain Sulu reminds him, the randomness of death is merely a reflection of the unexpected joys we find in life. If he spends his life worrying about mean meaningless deaths, he'll never find joy. Devon oh, Attendee. good old Boimler. Yeah. <laughs> For science-loving ensign, Devon Attendee worked hard to change the stigma around Orions, proving there's more to them than just thievery and, pirate, and, and piracy. Proving her medal to Dr. Ta'ana and medical, Tendi commits to her new opportunity with the Senior Science Officer Training Program under the guidance of the ship's counselor, Dr. Miglimo, as his first science officer trainee. She just needs to accept that on the path to success, there will be risks of failure. Things will get messy, and that's okay. During the pitting of the California class Cerritos and Texas class Aledo second contact showdown, Tendi has the away team halt installation of an outpost as she double checks for the possibility of microscopic life in a plant in a planet soil. Blaming herself for the Cerritos' loss, she's reminded that she was upholding the prime directive. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go through that whole thing. Oh, also mentions Rutherford, but I want to see. It does not mention. Uh, to Lynn, didn't we see uh, at the very end of season three to Lynn from the Vulcan so. ship coming over, right? I thought yeah. so. So the hope is that we'll have a fifth lower decker, which I would think would be fantastic because it keeps things yeah. fresh. Yeah. Gives you new relationships, new friendships and enemies. And am I wrong? We did see that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I just watched it again a couple of weeks ago. Oh, well, and then there was that photo of Tendi and Talyn together. Yes. Or is that a preview photo? Or is that mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Cool. Bulk makes a prediction in the live chat. "Quote: Tendi and Talyn will not get along, despite that picture we see of them very happily getting getting no. along together." <laughs> but we'll I'm see. shipping them. <laughs> I'm yeah. shipping them. <laughs> yeah, I'm just shipping them that. right out of here. <laughs> it's just because of that picture. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. So everybody go check that out at StarTrek.com. Boy, they are really, they've got a busy week. Mm -hmm. This is like their, this is like yeah. their holiday season kind of. It should mm -hmm. be Star Trek day. That's good. Yeah. Though, right. So um, the next big one, and this is also StarTrek.com. Boy, they are busy. Um, so this one is Wesley Crusher, Nog, and the college students of tomorrow. Mm. Oh, this is Wesley, old one. yeah, Wesley and Nog's experiences at Starfleet Academy highlight their different backgrounds and privileges. Yeah, but it, I believe it was shared out just recently because mm -hmm. I think that mm. maybe it was one of those things where it just didn't really get noticed initially. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it reads here. Star Trek is regarded as one of the most influential works of science fiction in history and a major source of trailblazing, futuristic, and innovative thinking, both technological and otherwise. One of the areas where the utopian vision of Star Trek has not historically met its idyllic aspirations, however, is in regards to education. In particular, higher education in the universe of Star Trek faces many of the same or highly similar challenges as what the institution sees today. This is perhaps no clearer than the depictions of how two characters, the next generation's Wesley Crusher and Deep Space Nine's Nog navigate their ways into and through Starfleet Academy over the course of their narrative journeys. And it feels like a, I'm reading a college dissertation here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that yeah. just me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's a, a, a more recent one um, about Wesley and Nog that covers this topic that's not mm. as um collegiate <laughs> <laughs> hey don't use collegiate as a negative term <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not <laughs> uh it reads wesley crusher is introduced in the first episode of star trek the next generation as the young son of two starfleet officers chief medical officer beverly crusher and the deceased lieutenant jack crusher during his time living on board the Starship flagship Enterprise with his mother, he is shown to be highly intelligent, ambitious, and curious and attempts to enter the prestigious Starfleet Academy as soon as he reaches the minimum age of admittance. 
even prior to his initial attempt to enter Starfleet Academy, he impresses Captain Jean-Luc Picard enough with his skills to earn an appointment as acting ensign on the Enterprise, and is even permitted to act as a helmsman on the bridge. Anyway, everybody knows his story. Uh, they cover it quite a bit. Then we go down a bit more. Here's where it gets interesting. In, not that Wesley Crusher isn't interesting, <laughs> kind of. In stark contrast to the privileged higher education journey of Wesley Crusher is that of Nog, the young Ferengi ne'er-do-well of Deep Space Nine. Unlike Wesley Crusher, who is a human with close family connections to Starfleet Academy, Nog is a complete outsider to higher education. As a Ferengi, a race outside the United Federation of Planets, he is raised from vastly different cultural norms from humans. That is such an interesting topic, isn't it? Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. so similar to what we see in the world mm -hmm. today, which is yeah. Wesley Crusher has Privilege. his parents who get can get him in. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also in good with Captain Picard, mm -hmm. who, who, who made him, you know, an acting ensign, probably because of his mom. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And is so this guy, we see legacy admissions. We see mm -hmm. all of legacy, there. especially. I, I feel like mm -hmm. it's all around him. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, whereas Nog doesn't, not only does he not have that, but he has the opposite. Mm -hmm. Nobody in his family, nobody in his entire race, has mm -hmm. done this his race does isn't even a part of the federation uh I, I don't know i just thought that was a really interesting uh dichotomy they pointed out yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. yeah muhammad do you see that in college or not really i mean privilege and legacy admissions yeah <laughs> this, is a, this is a big thing right now too because i mean one of the as you know one of the big things that's come across uh college campuses is, is this um change with regard to the use of race as a as an admissions um criterion right and there's a recent supreme court decision which said that you cannot no longer do that oh, right. but, but the thing which is which that did not erase and has nothing and no connection to is this concept of legacy admission which, you know, mm -hmm. so if, for example, I'll just pick on Harvard just randomly. So if if your parents went to Harvard, your odds of getting to Harvard are higher than mm -hmm. if not. That's what legacy admissions means there. And it, and it's interesting that that is still not considered biasing, whereas <laughs> this other Funny thing, about right? that. Right. Yeah. Right. I Thank suspect, you. I mean, there's financial reasons why that's true, because, I mean, ultimately, like, you know, donors tend to <laughs> tend to want this kind of thing but mm -hmm. yeah there's also questions that that should be asked around that you know, i'll just believe it at that <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather yeah that's a very interesting topic and one i know very little about but it seems like it's certainly something worthy of conversation so that's really yeah. cool that oh, star trek.com points oh. that out so everybody mm -hmm. go check that out uh go check out the entire article there it's very mm -hmm. interesting good find melissa longo oh thanks mm -hmm. <laughs> i think it's well, great too because it because it really does show how like the the degree of nog's accomplishment mm -hmm. you know because yeah. it wasn't just that he got in yeah. but he made it all the way through and he excelled and without it, privilege mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. With yeah, the opposite exactly. of privilege. Right. He was being yeah. held back by his his family, mm -hmm. by his race, by the fact that his race isn't in there, mm -hmm. by yeah. the fact that his superior officer said no. Yeah. 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 No, he had to prove to his superior mm -hmm. officer that to even just to get a letter of admittance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been allowed to go. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It's a very interesting article and um, it brings up some very interesting points. Um, some that I have lived myself being mm -hmm. a, a biracial person or somebody of mixed race. So yeah, it, it's, it brings up some very interesting points, but I also got um, out of it similar to a uh, similarity, one major similarity between Nog and Wesley. And that is their curiosity. They're both very mm -hmm. curious beings and, and I think that lends to their successes um, to both of them as well. So, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. And here's hoping that Nog. To... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, here's hoping that Nog continues to inspire people. Mm-hmm. You know, no offense to not say take no for an answer, but yeah. you know, if you hear no the first time, that doesn't necessarily mean no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, Nog yeah. was a great example of defying all odds and making a decision for the trajectory of his own life and not letting a no or the opposite of privilege, you know, any hindrances stopping him. Mm -hmm. And he proved his tenacity and his, um, yeah, and his intelligence to to, um, turn that no into a yes, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm And we are Jack, Jack Crusher from Picard, not not the elder, but the younger Jack Crusher basically had the same thing. I mean, you remember right? at, the, at the end of Picard, oh, yeah. he was already like got an assignment on a ship and things like that. Yeah, yeah like, you know, yeah. good yeah, parents, good connections, yeah. well, you know, well-known people, legacy, all that stuff, mm-hmm. you know. I'm mm-hmm. sure that all contributed to it. I mean, not There's that some... he wasn't qualified, but mm-hmm. there are probably a lot of other people who may be as good as Jack Crusher out there, but you know they're Ferengi and they don't have the same set of connections or they're, you know, Romulan or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe not Romulan. There's some <laughs> Bolian ensign on that bridge right now going, wait, why is this guy giving me orders? Don't you need to like, at least take a test, like an entrance exam or something? Yeah. <laughs> why is he already giving me <laughs> right? orders? And he's like, and Jack Crusher's like, just do it, bro. You know, he's like, well, hey, get, get my coffee. <laughs> I kick off my shoes in this captain's chair. <sighs> Anyway, uh, so very poignant. Mm, Absolutely. Uh, Okay, so check that out, everybody. Moving on to a couple final things here. One is from trekmovie.com. It says, preview Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the making of the classic film with author's interview. Mm-hmm. Can you read this one for us, Dr. Noor? Sure. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan is considered a sci-fi classic and is often cited as the best film of the franchise. And the story of how the film came to is a fascinating one. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the making of the classic film is a new book coming out this week from Titan that takes a deep dive into the making of The Wrath of Khan based on new research. This coffee table book features unpublished archival material, behind the scenes photography, production art, cut scenes, script extracts, and much more alongside new and exclusive interviews with the creatives, including director director Nicholas Meyer. We have an exclusive preview and interview with the book authors, John and Maria Jose Tenuto. Below. Mm -hmm. Do I keep reading or have an interview just one? Yeah, please. Sure. Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the making of the classic film. John Tenuto and Maria Jose Tenuto are academic award-winning sociology professors with over two decades of deep expertise in pop culture and an even deeper love of Star Trek. Their wedding song was the Star Trek Voyager theme. Nice. (laughs) Their research and analysis has been featured in a number of TV, print, and online outlets, including trekmovie.com, and on the Netflix TV show, The Toys That Made Us, and the History Channel's The Center Seat. 55 years of Star mm-hmm. Trek docuseries. Mm-hmm. Speaking to Trek movie via email, the Tenutos talked about their motivation to write a book about this movie that came out in 1982. Uh, quick note, this has got to be, Brian Volkweiss has got to yeah. be connected to this in totally. some way because he is the EP of both of these things. Yep. Yeah. The totally. voice that made us and the History Channel's The Center Seat 55 years. Um, so that's really mm-hmm. interesting. Actually, Everybody check out this today. out. Um, where is he? There he is. Check this out, everybody. Um, if you go to our virtual TrekCon podcast and you <laughs> scroll down about you know, yes. seven or eight things, you'll see Brian Volkweiss yeah. in the seat Star Trek documentary series. That was a great, From last a great year. interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. thank you. And yeah. this guy's great. This guy is an enormous mover and shaker right now in all kinds of series and movies and documentaries. And he's reviving all these old 80s cartoons and 80s toys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so check that out and just go look him up uh, for everything that he does. Yeah. And uh, that's really interesting. 
Karathicon. Yeah. That was 41 years ago, right? That math seems weird. <laughs> that would make me... <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's a great article if you want to mm. go and read it. Um, it. It's got... It says it's got some interviews from... Uh, Ricardo Maltabon's daughter, Ooh. as well as a forward written by Julie Nimoy, and a photo included and an interview as well. Um, oh, super! A lot of other great, interesting stuff. Like, you know, photos from sets and stuff. And awesome! Uh, Very yeah. cool. Good find. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question in the live chat from Lucia. Uh, we'll answer your question in just a couple minutes. She asks. Who is going to be on Lower Decks on the seventh rule for Lower Decks? As in, who's going to be on our seventh rule review of oh. Lower Decks? We'll answer that quite. Boy, that's very presumptuous of her. <laughs> <laughs> Sirach Lofton and Ryan aren't good enough? Don't answer that. <laughs> don't, don't answer that. Uh, the, last, the last bit of news, just to touch on very quickly, is from fox5atlanta.com. Mm. And it says Star Trek's George Decay, <laughs> Garrett Wong appear at Dragon Con. And obviously we know there are way, way more Star Trek people at Dragon Con. Than yeah, Justin. that's what I was going to say. That's true. <laughs> but I just think that's there. cool that they're covering that uh, yeah, right. for obvious yeah. reasons, especially George. You know, he's yeah. a national treasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, Garrett Wong, I saw him in some pictures and tweets over the weekend. Right? Mama, do you know anything about that? I did. I did see him in various <laughs> pictures and tweets over the weekend. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, which one in particular you're referring to. You, I could guess did you one. Put him in them. <laughs> uh, there was one that he put me in, not, not the other way around. <laughs> was there a movie involved? There by was any a chance? movie involved in that one. <laughs> yeah, one uh, we, we, we went to dinner and and um, we were sitting across from the theater and and we saw Barbie was showing, and I was like, you know, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen it either. I wouldn't mind seeing it. I wouldn't mind seeing it either. <laughs> so we just like, awesome. you know what? Let's just go see it. This was the night before <laughs> the con really started. You guys are story. like, I mean, I'll go if you do. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't care, but I'll, I'll go if you. I yeah. haven't seen it, so. Yeah. <laughs> it actually, ended up being great because there were so many Barbie cosplays and and, oh, and references cool. throughout the convention. Cool. So I was like, we just saw that. We know exactly what it is. <laughs> that's amazing nice actually all, all of us got thrown off because uh friday morning the hilton when you came down the elevator there was like a thousand barbie people and they're all going hi barbie hi barbie i was like oh, no. oh my god did everybody <laughs> dress up as barbie like did the whole convention dress up? but it's around they're just having a meetup just right there but, <laughs> but that threw off so many people including me who thought like the whole convention is going to be barbie <laughs> that's amazing I'm the last holdout left that hasn't seen it. No, I still haven't no. seen it. I haven't no, seen really it good. either. Yeah. I won't say it, wow. it was good. Yeah. I want to. I've been to the movie theater, I think, once or twice since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I, I, feel... think one, I think there were like three other people in the theater with us by the time the movie actually started. And they were saying way at the other end. So I was like, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I haven't been to one movie since the pandemic. Yeah. Wow. I've been to two Indiana Jones and Matt Boardman's movie. Oh, the one with the, 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 one with the airplanes. Mm -hmm. Nice. The Matt Boardman story. The Matt Boardman story. <laughs> the Matt Boardman show featuring <laughs> Matt Boardman, episode one. Matt Boardman, the Matt Boardman story by Matt Boardman. <laughs> oh. it was my great. Matt Boardman. I really illustrated it. by Matt Boardman. <laughs> we go to the puzzle. Hell yeah. Right, this, this is this is a this is a challenging one but I, I actually think it's less tough than last time and i'll say that somebody on the screen got it you know and actually with less hints too so okay everybody ready take the last names of two officers on the cerritos in lower decks okay last names of two officers on the cerritos and lower decks and mix up the letters from that and adding one extra space you can get three words right one of them, the, you know, one of them is uh, a person's title, specifically from Star Wars. So think something like General, right? That, that sort of title. And I don't mean like a movie title. So something like General, but more Star Trek centric than General. 
So one of them would be a person's, a, a person's title specifically from Star Wars. Another one would be someone who is severely unintelligent, a word for that. And the third is a stereotypical Southern Californian recreational role. I mean, role like act, like acting role. I mean, not actually, mm -hmm. not actually, acting is not the answer. <laughs> but role, not like dinner role. <laughs> so I'll read again. Take the last names of two officers on the Cerritos and Lower Decks and mix up the letters. From that and adding an extra space, you can get three words. A person's title, specifically from Star Wars. Again, something that's Star Wars centric. Another word for someone who is severely unintelligent and a stereotypical Southern California recreational role. Who are the two characters and what is the anagram? Okay, I'm going to take a quick stab before we Please. go into this and just say... A Star Wars title, I'm feeling Grand Moff. Okay, that's the first thing that I'm thinking. Grand Moff, Grand Moff, Tarkin, or whatever. Possibly. Uh, another word for severely unintelligent. There's a bunch of those. But the stereotypical Southern Californian role, I don't even know what yeah, that means. So you're means. from Southern California, so you may not, you know, you may not mm -hmm. have a disadvantage at it. Like when other people think of Southern California, oh, that person uh, is in Southern California. They're not an actor. They are a surfer. waiter. <laughs> yeah surfer is the other one yeah waiter uh, <laughs> waiter would not be that's what they all say, that's that's what they all say. Yeah. if they go oh what do you do and they say i'm an actor they go oh what restaurant do you work at yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. hurtful because it's true oh yeah I it's know. true in new york too uh, <laughs> so two last never names been. From, from the cerritos and then the, the three like the the title shacks Ransom, uh, Boimler, Rutherford, right? Things like that. You yeah. said Tendi, Mariner, you know, oh, okay. Freeman, yeah. you know, yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Stevens, uh, oh, yeah. Billups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not, there's not a, there's some, but there's not a ton, but like mm -hmm. not badgy, for example. That's the reason I said like a, <laughs> an officer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not peanut hamper. <laughs> Good. Uh, all right. So anyway, everybody, uh, let's see. Monday, yesterday, uh, let's talk about the week. Yesterday on the seventh rule, we released our full review of Star Trek The Next Generation season two episode, The Schizoid Man. Remember The Schizoid Man? That was kind of a weird one. Mm. We review the entire thing. It's a ton of fun. Uh, so enjoy that. That is on the seventh rule YouTube channel. Now, tomorrow, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time, it is September. So we are beginning Saturday morning cartoons because September is when we used to go back to school as kids, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we look forward to our Saturday morning cartoons. This is on the Falling Tower YouTube channel. Falling Tower, watch the first podcast with myself, Dr. Muhammad Noor, and our good friend, Jackie Goner, who is at Dragon Con or was. We review mm -hmm. Captain planet and the planeteers Ooh. 1990 it was so check that out 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern time on the falling tower youtube channel now on third wow the look on melissa's face tells me she's getting some good answers in the live chat right now <laughs> no i'm trying to figure it out <laughs> i put, oh, I, put I, was, I put like a summary in the chat too in case mm -hmm. it was like wait what was that helpful. all again yeah helpful uh, so now on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Seventh Rule YouTube channel, we will begin our Lower Decks Review Marathon because there's like two yeah. episodes. We will drop them both in succession starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So it'll be like 6 p.m. and 7.15. They're going to like two nine... separate reviews. Mm -hmm. One review yes. for one episode, one review for the other. Got it. Mm -hmm. 9 p.m. Eastern and 10, 15 p.m. Eastern time for the second one. Uh, and to answer the question in the live chat, uh, the first episode at 6 p.m. Pacific, we will actually have two guests. We will have graphic designer Amanda Wong. And oh, right, she's awesome. freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. And we will have producing uh, director and director of this episode, Barry Kelly, joining us. Uh, so it's going to be a lot to cover and a lot of celebration and a lot of fun. And we hope to see all of you there Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Yay. It's also the first day of NFL football. Don't watch that. 
F1. <laughs> Evo it. Uh, is is there, that's still a thing? I don't know. I never used <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's something like old people do. TiVo. I'll just TiVo yeah, the sure wheel they're... of fortune. <laughs> right? They don't want to miss Pat Sajak. Right. Yeah. Oh, Pat. Anyway. Friday, come right back here on this channel, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time for Star Trek and chill the Star Trek Day edition. We will be covering everything, all the shenanigans of Star Trek Day in person at Paramount and virtually throughout the Internet. It's going to be a big full day, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Come check us out right here on the virtual TrekCon channel for Star Trek and chill. Lastly, on Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time, uh, Sirach Lofton, myself, and Larry Nemechek will review the first segment of Star Trek The Next Generation Season 2, Episode 11, Contagion. We definitely needed Larry Nemechek for this one, Dr. Mm -hmm. Trek. It's kind of a weird one for me. Anyway, that is 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern time on the 7th Rule YouTube channel this coming Sunday. Mohammed, what do you got for us? Uh, I, so people have gotten elements of it. I'm curious <laughs> to see. Like, I, I've seen somebody's gotten the last words or somebody's gotten, I think, all the words but one. <laughs> Ooh. <Wow>. Yeah. <laughs> but not all together. As it's not the same person. So you know, just another what's few the answer? Seconds. Oh, okay. I just, you know, just give <laughs> like, a few seconds here because I think people are close. I gave another hint just now, which was a uh, hint on first word: Ryan's housemate. Oh, oh, that's, a, that's, <laughs> an, even more, that's an even more obvious title than Grand Moff. I was right. Like yeah. <laughs> 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 right. So. <laughs> Oh uh, yes, Matt Borman says now we have all the pieces together. Yep. So Matt Borman is correct on one of the words is Darth. Uh, uh, the, the the word about the severely unintelligent person Linda Andrig got it, which was um, moron. Mm-hmm. And uh, Melissa, I think you're the one who said surfer. <laughs> so yeah, mm-hmm. Darth moron surfer, which is not a comment on 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 Ryan's housemate. So what is do we got? Anagram. Rutherford and Ransom. Wait, correct. Ransom. That's it. Yes. Ryan, you solved it. <laughs> well, I, I did not. <laughs> you guys, you guys put me on third base and hit a pitch. <laughs> but you <laughs> ran home. Oh, a sacrifice job. fly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I ransom Rutherford. Rutherford. Yeah. Or Rutherford Ransom. Mm. The order doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> not not the other one. I hadn't gotten Okay. Him. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> and, and credit to Jenny R. Johnson, who actually solved the entire thing at a time. Like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Great anagrams. Thank you. Yeah. Darth. Darth was too easy of an answer. <laughs> that was too easy. <laughs> because it Not was for me. So obvious. <laughs> no, it, that's why it was so hard to get yeah. because it was so obvious. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good stuff, Jenny. And thank you for not looking like you knew everything when he asked a question. Because if I, if if I, I specifically I trying really hard not to. when Muhammad first sent it, I was like, oh no, I don't want to know, right? But if I had guessed it while he's reading, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> but you were very cool about it, Jenny. <laughs> All right. So that's it, everybody. We got to run in just a second. Uh, Dr. Noor, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Sure, I'm on the all the socials at Muff Noor, M like Michael, A, F like Frank, N like November, O, O, R. So that's, you know, t- formerly Twitter, now X, Facebook, Instagram, Blue Sky, LinkedIn, Mastodon, Threads, <laughs> all those things. Uh, and I'm on YouTube as Biotrekkie. And I will be releasing an episode of uh, a short episode of by tricky explains on thursday about mm-hmm. one of the lower decks episodes that will release that day what time uh 10 a.m eastern time i guess 7 a.m pacific time you don't have to watch mm-hmm. it live though it just it'll just drop you know and it's only like it's like two it's like two minutes long or two and a half minutes long so it, it's it won't take up much of your day it's a it's a what are they called very, very short, short track track <laughs> <laughs> uh hello to john lutton in the live chat welcome thanks for joining in uh what about you jenny r johnson with the magnificent paint strokes oh right where can you find me yes pretty well everywhere (laughs) i'm 
my website, you can find me, which gives you basically everything <laughs> at jennyrjohnson.com. Well, like not everything, but like a lot of stuff. And wow. on <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, so that's uh so right, yes. Uh jennyrjohnson.com. Mm-hmm. Um on Twitter, I am Jenny R. Johnson, but everywhere else, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I am Jenny R. Johnson Art. And I've got prints coming. I've got um, a new painting that will be finished in like two days. And nice. you should come check it out on my social media. Hey. And Jenny's one? social media yes. is fun to follow because yes. she shows you these time-lapse videos of her creating her art, which is not, not just super fun and interesting to watch, but like I look at it like, that's actually a skill in and of itself. Like, you know, setting up a camera and doing all this stuff and all the perfect mm-hmm. lighting. You've got like a really mm-hmm. good setup there. Good you eye. even just what I have right now. Right here. Got like ring light, ring light, ring light. I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, Melissa Longo, what about you? Um, at, on social media at Melissa Longo, M-A-L-I-S-S-A. Um, uh, the introverted republic.com walking art made by Melissa is a page in, on that website and walking art made by Melissa on Patreon. I am in the middle of the next chapter and, um, a new, uh, voice segment should be released Ooh. very soon. Ooh. 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 So yeah. And then, um, also check out my shirt because you couldn't before. Oh, yay. And chill. But you got the shirt you created here. Yes. Oh, yes. That one. Yes, I did. My favorite. One. I love it. It's a good one. Thank you. I think my favorite might be the Picard one. But that's also good. good. That's a good very one. Good. I'm a big fan. Uh, and everybody, you can find me online at Ryan TG Husk. That's on Twitter at Ryan TG Husk. I have a theory that we're not going to have to say X much longer. I can't. That, that, it's so good. They're going to go back to Twitter, right? They can't. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I I just, I think they're going to be like, you know what? That was weird. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Twitter is fine. Weird. Like, would they make it x.com? I mean, (laughs) mean, just the whole thing. Plus, x is like, like, it sounds like you're saying, don't, don't touch that app on your phone. Don't do it. Yeah. It's then they added the bird poop to the icon too. Oh, I, mean, I know, like, right? I, like, what? <laughs> I mean, that part's charming, but that's good luck. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, you can also find me uh, at uh, the Seventh Rule at Virtual TrekCon and at Falling Tower on your favorite social media, especially <laughs> YouTube. But please go find us Virtual TrekCon uh, on w- wherever you get your audio podcast. Please subscribe or follow that. Uh, give us a rating and a five, sorry, a five-star rating and a review. It's very important. Um, Also bear in mind, we added all this stuff from before. Virtual Trek Con 1 was recorded in like May, June, and July of 2020. So most people didn't really have great mics or amazing Wi-Fi or good lighting. So you will hear, you know, not the best microphone. Sometimes Wi-Fi cuts out. But the conversations are the best because it was mm. the first time that anybody was ever doing this. It's still the first and biggest virtual Star Trek and sci-fi convention in the history of the world. That's true. Look it up. Yes, it is um, true. But the since it was the first, not everybody, you know, whatever. But the conversations were great. Technology wasn't quite there. By Virtual Trek Con 3, technology was great and everybody yeah. loves it. So enjoy those. Um what do you got, Muhammad? You're going to say something. Oh, I was just going to say you didn't mention the seventh rule. When you said falling, or you said falling tower and virtual check down is also the seventh rule. And at the seventh rule, yeah. number one, I do think I said it, but I'll say it twice. Oh, okay, maybe I missed it. I apologize. Uh, not at all. Check those out. Thank you all very much for joining us on our 100th episode. This is our season finale. Wow. So this is the last time you're going to be seeing us for about a year. Um, yeah. Just <laughs> so we'll see it. We'll see you next Goodbye. week. <laughs> uh, we will see you next week. We don't take any weeks off except for when we go to like Star Trek Las Vegas for a week or the Star Trek cruise. 
Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, John Davis, Robert Kaiser, May Borello. I'm getting those kosher's from you, May. Valk, mm-hmm. uh, Glenn Iverson, David Gregory, um, and everybody. We see you, Rico Anderson. Feel better soon, Kyle mm-hmm. Gray. Thanks for hanging out, Bob D. What's up? Thank you all very much for joining us. And until next time, hey. Whenever you want to talk about Star Trek animated short treks and whether they're canon, very sure. <laughs> put it on the main viewer. <laughs>